Sean, welcome to TEDx Santa Barbara. Thank you, Mark. Glad to be here. I am I am thrilled that you're here, and I and I I have to let our audience know that the first time you and I talked, it was a little bit of a rushed conversation. Why don't you tell them what was happening? Yeah, certainly. Uh, I'm, it's probably been a couple months at least since we first connected, and uh, in in an uh, effort to set up this discussion. At that time, we were dealing with a, uh, a juvenile baby humpback whale that was entangled in fishing gear pretty far north of us here in Santa Barbara, up off Halama County uh, Beach Park. Um, and um, that animal was uh, reported to us and working for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Our job is to protect these animals. And so we were in full on emergency response mode. And that, that's when you and I were on the phone and I, I had to jump off real quickly to try and uh, get our crews up there to, to save that animal. That was, uh, that was just fascinating. And, and, uh, in fact, the, the calf did manage to escape on its own. Is that right? It, it did. Um, boy, after three days of effort from a lot of amazing people, uh, uh when we finally got up there, it was no longer, um, uh, we could no longer, no longer find it. Um, I, I do have to share and sorry, you know, start on a somber note. Not more than seven or eight days later, uh, uh, the animal washed ashore and oh. um, it had perished. And so, you know, when when caught in fishing gear, when entangled, it puts the animals under tremendous stress. And, um, you know, despite our best efforts, we just couldn't get to that one. And, you know, it's it's timely we're talking today because just last week, another uh, humpback whale washed up uh, right off uh, Halama and uh, of an adult over 40 feet long and 40 tons of, of animal that washed up on the beach. And so, you know, strandings, they, they do happen. And, and that's, you know, what we're going to talk more about today, why they happen, where they happen, and, and what we're doing about them. Tell me about your, your mandate. I was, uh, I'd asked you before we got on the show, we recently got to go out and visit the Channel Islands and, and go to all three islands and do some hiking. It was it, spectacular. I mean, absolutely spectacular and you and you said your remit is the water around the islands and the national the sanctuary so you're paying attention to the whales but you're also paying attention to the shipping lanes is that right yeah, that's correct and, and lucky you for getting to visit the islands which are managed by the channel islands national park and and starting at the high tide around the northern channel islands and going out six nautical miles offshore is the channel islands national marine sanctuary and we're part of a system of national marine sanctuaries around the country um, in some American territories. And you know, the, the, uh, think of these as uh, American treasures, they're underwater parks. And our mandate is to protect sanctuary resources, which um, includes everything, everything within uh, that boundary uh, from, uh, the, from zooplankton to blue whales, um, shipwrecks and uh, everything in between. It's our mandate under the National Marine Sanctuaries Act uh, to protect those resources for the enjoyment of the public. And um, like you getting to go out to the islands and, um, and just enjoy what's really in our front yard here, it's just uh, spectacular. And, um, and most of your audiences around the country probably live pretty close to National Marine Sanctuary. And we really want the public to get out there and enjoy these, these magnificent places. About 25 years ago, I was certified uh, right off of Anacapa Island and did all did 70 dives out there uh, around the islands and it is just spec one of the, one of the great natural wonders of the world out there so i'm curious, just personally how did you get so interested in this job it's very interesting so uh, i could see it but when was that was it were you a little kid when this happened well, I, I've grown up on the California coastline, uh, born and raised down in Del Mar, California. And like most people living along the coastlines, whether it's here on the eastern seaboard um, or anywhere where you're connected to an ocean, uh, it, uh, it's a lifestyle that really I found um, the opportunity to turn a, a lifestyle into a career opportunity. Um, and so um, it's really been a pleasure uh, I can't believe I'm 20 years in working for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And to be honest, it doesn't feel like work. Uh, you know, we, um, we strive to keep these oceans beautiful and safe and clean and all the animals uh, in them, as well as uh, to help the public enjoy them. 
like I grew up doing and I still do today. I, I fish and dive and surf. And, um, you know, so it is something that has just been um, a, a lifelong uh, passion and uh, just a, a fantastic place to, uh, to work and to call home. The, the channel for those of us who live here, we're, we're used to seeing um, very, very large tankers. And if you've gone out there on a fishing boat or done a day trip or something, those, those they're, they're mammoth, absolutely mammoth. And I had heard on one of our shows here in the last month, two months, the amount of air pollution that the tankers produce was actually a staggering percentage of the global percentage. I don't remember the exact number, but tell us about that. I, I was shocked. So here in the Santa Barbara Channel, uh, between the mainland and the islands, there, uh, there are shipping lanes and they're established internationally and uh, shipping lanes are good. We want these big ships using shipping lanes, much like we use uh, the lanes on a freeway mm -hmm. to keep the flow of traffic um, moving quickly and safely um, and here we have ships coming over from Asia that visit the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach, and then uh, they head back north up to the port of Oakland and San Francisco and onward to Tacoma and uh, Seattle up in Washington, and then they head back across the Pacific um, over to the Asian ports. And, you know, it's not something I really appreciated either uh, uh, until we started wrestling with this issue of, of these large ships. Uh, running over, striking uh, right. the, the whales that come and visit us. And so shipping, a couple of things I've really, um, um, uh, I've been impressed by is our, our global economic dependence on shipping. Mm -hmm. And so if you, you know, if you look around the room um, and I invite everyone to consider that nine out of 10 things of everything has been shipped at some point in the manufacturing and then the distribution and sale of those products, nine out of 10 things. So if you look at the clothes or furniture, your cars, they came over on a ship at some point. And um, these are enormous machines, as you mentioned, some of the, uh, the largest machines on the planet. Um, one of the largest uh, ships to ever uh, be built is, is now um, visiting the port of Los Angeles. They had to raise a bridge uh, just to make space for this. It's over 1200 feet long. Um, and the bridge of the ship can be eight, nine, 10 stories above the waterline. And these ships carry, so if you think about when you're on the freeway and, a, and, a, and a, a tractor trailer truck goes by you pulling a 40 foot container. So those containers come over on uh, these ships and the largest ship on the planet right now can carry over 18,000 40 foot containers. What? So this is why um, it's, we depend on this, right? The, yeah. the American economy, the global economy depends on shipping. And, but with that, there, of course, there are costs. And, and, and we'll get into those costs, as you mentioned, uh, impacts on air quality. And when you think about air quality, think about your health. Think about human health, the, the health of your community. Um, um, and so air quality is real important that we have clean air to breathe. Yeah. And what I think you and I uh, really find striking here is that in Santa Barbara and Ventura counties, th these are beautiful coastal communities. We don't have a lot of heavy industry. Um, uh, and, and yet our air quality does suffer from um, a lot of the air pollution emitted by the ships. And they're just right offshore. So essentially we live on the ship highway and there are repercussions to our own health um, you alluded to the health of the planet. So there are greenhouse gases emitted um, by ships. In fact, globally, three to 5% of greenhouse gases come from the shipping industry worldwide. There was an interesting TED talk, uh, Ted Monterey, just a few weeks ago about some experiments using ammonia, ammonia, yeah, ammonia as a, a new fuel source for shipping as a clean fuel source. And then there's the electrif electrification uh, concept as well. So those are interesting. So that's just part of a larger, uh, what are we doing about transportation? Zero in on the piece about the whale strikes. How, I'm, how do you avoid that? What's the, is it avoidable or is it just unavoidable and it's just a sad fact of life? Well, so we're really fortunate here in Southern California and Santa Barbara Channel uh, in particular, as well as up in Monterey Bay, that every summer 
uh, roughly between May and November, these large, beautiful, big animals, blue, fin, and humpback whales, they come to visit the channel and they're here to feed. Uh, they feed six plus months out of the year and then they go back to their breeding grounds where they don't feed for five, six months. So they really need to store up um, uh, while they're here. And unfortunately, sometimes the food that they focus on, which is krill, a small shrimp-like critter, um, it, the, the krill, it, they're in the shipping lanes. And so, um, you know, when the animals are here, they're head down diving all day long. And, you know, what's amazing is an 80 foot blue whale, the largest animal to ever have lived on earth, which is, you know, it's a, a classic five-year-old fact. And I still find it amazing. These are, we are living in the time of the largest animals on the planet. And they're able to dive six, seven, 800 feet down, which for an 80 foot animal is like taking 10 steps across your kitchen. But they go down deep, they, they uh, open their huge mouths, uh, gulp a bunch of water um, and thousands of pounds of krill uh, daily. And they come up to the surface, take a couple big breaths and head back down. If that's in a shipping lane, that could be problematic because uh, as I said, we're on this busy shipping, uh, the shipping highway the ports of LA and Long Beach. And so we can't, the, the real challenge is how do you separate ships and whales? And we've done some work on that we can talk about, um, but when you can't separate the two, the two Goliaths out there in the ocean, what we're asking uh, and what we're working on is slowing the ships down. And so through vessel that. speed reduction, uh, what we're doing, it's, it's, it does, accomplishes a number of things. One is you slow a ship down, it gives the animal more time to get out of the way. Um, and secondly, if it is hit, um, it's hit at a much slower speed, increasing the survivability of a strike. Now, we know this doesn't often happen. And um, I wasn't even aware of this challenge. I'm an ocean manager, and I have to tell you, it was a wake-up call when we had four blue whales wash up on our coastline uh, in 2007. And, uh, you know, there's, there's only one thing on the planet that can knock a blue whale out of the water, and, and that's a big ship. And so that's, that's this journey that we've been on for 15 years, specifically here on the, on the West Coast. And this is a challenge, not just here. This is a global challenge. Well, that was the, that was the next part. So it sounds like um, reducing the speed is going to reduce the burn. We're going to reduce the emission. It's going to reduce the impact and possibly... Um, uh, I'm I'm hoping that the the shipping companies are on board with this and they're working because they don't want to kill whales. So they're they're I'm I'm hoping there's other technologies at, at play that I don't know about that I want to in my mind I want to uh, feel like they exist like they're trying to figure this out. Tell me about the scalability though. Are we doing things unique here in Santa Barbara that then can can transcend out and you can share the, our learnings uh, with other channels around the world? Absolutely. So we, we've been incentivizing the industry to slow down. Um, and, and it's just uh, the, the scale of our program is focused on the Santa Barbara Channel and off uh, San Francisco Bay, where again, you have these popular ports and, and shipping highways and lots of animals visiting. But you know the whales and ships move. Uh, between these regions and they move globally as I mentioned in the beginning and so our incentive-based approach which we call protecting blue whales and blue skies uh, is something that we believe needs to scale and it can scale and the shipping lines are interested we have 18 shipping lines involved in the program this year and of those 18 lines they represent 90 percent of that con uh, that container oh. traffic coming to the west coast and so we know we have the industry's attention. They certainly care. No ship captain wants to hit a whale, certainly not. They don't even realize they do. Um, and we know though, when they leave here, they go back across the Pacific to Asian ports. And so what we're doing here, we believe can scale and needs to scale. Uh, and this incentive approach where we're offering modest financial incentives and really emphasizing positive public relations that's what the industry really cares about is being recognized for being sustainable. And when they slow down, as, you're, as you've been suggesting, that it reduces ship strikes, it reduces air pollution, reduces greenhouse gases, and we probably don't have time to talk about it, but it also reduces uh, ocean noise. So there's a lot of benefit 
which I didn't understand because I'm a, I'm a whale guy and ocean manager. But when I started partnering with the air districts of Santa Barbara and Ventura County counties, we realized that we had an alliance of interests working with the industry and it's working really well. We just need to expand this geographically um, beyond this region so that whales, air quality people and the climate are protected wherever the ships and whales um, are uh, in the same place. Sean, I am I am so glad to hear this uh, spirit of cooperation and collaboration uh, that you've you've managed with uh, with the government, right? This is a federal agency, and working with your partners around the world. Thank you for helping explain all of that.